Welcome to the Mind Design Sports Podcast. I'm Brandon, and in each episode, I'll be talking about sports psychology with the guest speaker. If you want to design your sports experience, you've come to the right place. If you want more tips and insights on how to improve your sports performance mentally, check out our website and other podcasts at mind-designsports.org. Today, we have a very special guest speaker, Nicole Barnhart. Nicole is an American soccer goalkeeper who currently plays for Kansas City in the National Women's Soccer League. She's a goalkeeper for the United States national team. She's been engaging herself in sports, including playing for the boys' soccer team for four years in high school, basketball, and lacrosse. Apart from playing, Nicole has coached goalkeepers from high school to the U.S. Women's National Team and owns her her own goalkeeping school, Nicole Barnhart Goalkeeping. Nicole is currently a volunteer assistant coach at Stanford, and she also graduated from Stanford. Thanks for joining us, Nicole. Yeah, thanks so much for having me on. Cool. So my first question is just to um, let the audience know about your background in sports and perhaps even maybe some experience in sports psychology and your soccer career in general. Yeah, well, I've been lucky enough to have a long soccer career, uh, so I can I'll make it brief for you. But I grew up uh, pretty competitive from a young age. Wanted to always be involved in sports had an older brother, so kind of tagged along with him and his buddies and was very active, engaged in sports from an early age. And when I was about six years old, uh, convinced my parents to let me go try out for our local rec soccer team and ended up actually being invited to play on the local boys travel soccer team. And that was the start of my soccer career right there. And I always joke that my parents really didn't know what they were Um, getting themselves into when they agreed to let myself and my siblings play soccer. But, um, you know, in in the long run, I've had a really great career. I grew up playing uh, club soccer on local boys team and then eventually got involved with uh, out-of-town girls soccer club that is ultimately kind of what gave me the exposure I needed to get on uh, local Uh, travel teams, local select teams, ultimately into the ODP program, and that eventually um, propelled me into the youth national team program, which is kind of what helped me get the visibility I needed to be recruited and play at Stanford, and then that is what propelled me on to get to play with the full women's national team for a little bit over 10 years. That's amazing. So how did you, how did playing with boys at a younger age help you or maybe even hurt you yeah I honestly absolutely loved it I was super competitive which is used to kind of getting beat up and pushed around by my brother's uh, friends when we we play all kinds of sports in the neighborhood so I think for me it was kind of a seamless transition to to be playing with the boys but I think ultimately looking back it it's probably what really helped propel me into my career Growing up, I was fortunate to be one of the taller kids in an early age, so I think that helped me a little bit playing against the boys, but you eventually get to the point where they become a little bit more athletic, a little bit faster, a little bit bigger and stronger, and you just have to figure out how to adapt, and I think especially as a goalkeeper, you start to see balls that are struck a little bit harder, uh, that maybe move a little bit more, and just the speed of play is a little bit different, and I found it very beneficial, and even as I got further along in my career and and out of high school and out of actually playing on boys teams, I still found as many opportunities as I could to, to train with guys. And at one point I was training with some MLS guys when I was out coaching and finished playing at Stanford and and still in with the women's team. And um, I've even in Kansas city, a couple years back trained with the men's indoor soccer team here, just to, just to get that kind of higher level speed of play and, and athleticism and everything else and just having balls struck it a little bit faster because it does change the way you have to play and I think if you can adapt to that then it makes the women's game almost seem a little bit slower for you at times. Absolutely. So as a woman in sports, what would you tell um, fellow female athletes that feel discor- discouraged to play certain sports maybe that are more male dominated? So for example, like wrestling or football and maybe even soccer. Yeah, I think if you have a true love and passion for it, then go ahead and pursue it. Um, Don't let anybody else tell you what you can or can't do or shouldn't do. 
if if you have your your heart and mind set on doing something then go out and do it to the best of your ability and i think the more that you can believe in yourself uh the more that other people will start to believe in you and just don't let other people kind of put you down and and tell you that something's not achievable because you know for me at a younger age i didn't really have a whole lot of of women female athletes to look up to until i was almost you know at the end of my high school career and that was when i kind of really started to get engaged and follow the the women's national team they kind of started becoming big and and i had known from way before that point that i wanted to be a professional soccer player even though it wasn't really a thing for women at that time and and i had definitely had people say hey you know you might want to reconsider that i don't know if that's a realistic kind of goal or dream for you but i kind of didn't let them you know persuade me and and change my mind i knew that that was what i wanted and i was going to improve kind of everybody wrong that that didn't believe in me and and sure enough you know i just kind of kept pushing through you're going to have tough times there's going to be adversity i think just know that and be willing to accept that but use it to help you grow as a person and an athlete and just become a better person along the way and and i think you'll you'll learn and gain so much from the process and hopefully you'll be able to push through and achieve what you want to in the, in the long run yeah, that's great advice. So having graduated from Stanford, how did you manage to balance between sports and academics? Because Stanford's one of the best universities and I'm sure their academics are super time consuming and rigorous. Yeah, absolutely. I think I was very fortunate to have parents that um, valued the academic side of everything as I was growing up. Um, you know, school always came first, grades were important schoolwork was important and if we weren't getting things done or weren't staying on top of that we weren't allowed to participate in sports and with especially as i got older and our schedule started getting more and more busy with you know multiple soccer teams high school sports middle school sports a lot crammed into a little bit of time we learned very quickly of how to make the most of what little bit of time we had and to be very punctual with getting work done and have a very good schedule set out of how and when we were going to get things done in a timely manner and and had to stay on top of things then and i think that ultimately really just prepared me for college and and the the demands of being a, a student athlete especially at a school like stanford because again it's something where if you don't manage your time well you it's going to be very tough and you're going to get very behind especially when you're in season and missing classes um missing sections and having to do work on the road and having to turn in assignments that you miss when you're not there so i think for me i was very fortunate to kind of have that structure growing up through almost my whole life that it made that transition pretty seamless for me but it's definitely tough cuz you have a lot more demands and a lot more pressure on you when you do get to college and you have to be very good at managing your time otherwise it's it's going to be a very tough road how do you manage your time for me, I'm one that I love writing things down. I love kind of having a schedule, um, you know, a calendar of when things are due, when I have free time, when I'm busy. And sometimes it it takes a little bit of sacrificing, you know, maybe not getting to go out and hang out with your friends because you know this is your one hour of free time where you have where you have to really get work done and it's really just taking advantage of those little time slots you have when you have them and be as productive as you can and find somewhere where you can work with the most minimal distraction and just be productive and get done what you need to do on a timely matter and kind of just stick to that schedule and plan as much as you possibly can. I see. So kind of a related question would be um some people may argue that putting so much time into school isn't that kind of counterproductive if your main goal is to get really good in soccer? Or do you believe it's important to have that backup option like you did um, being at Stanford and also being a soccer player? Yeah, I I think academics are tremendously important. Um, you know, you never know when your soccer or sports pr- career could come to an end. And, and I think you have to prepare as if, you know, that day could come tomorrow. And, and what have you done to set yourself up to be successful if that does happen? And, you know, you can you can always go back to school. But for me, I thought it was very important to finish school before I moved on to anything else so that when my my soccer playing days come to an end, 
I kind of already have that base established and, and have a kind of plan in line for moving on to that next phase of life. Um, you know, you can only play soccer and sports for so long. So I think it's, it's great to have the academic side of things to fall back upon when that, when that um, end of your career comes and you are having to move on to something else that you at least have that, that base of, of something to start from. Great. I love that answer. So what do you think made you most successful in being on the national team? Was it something mentally or did something motivate you or really anything? I think one of the biggest things for me was, honestly, it was just a dream come true to be there. And I always wanted to make the most of that opportunity. I wanted to represent all of the people that had coached me and mentored me and and help me get to that position and into that role. And I I find soccer to be such a joy and it's such a passion of mine that I always wanted to make the most of my opportunity there. And again, it's something where you never know how short or how long that time with the national team is going to be. And you just have to make the most of, of every moment you have there. You have to give, give your best um, on the field, off the field, be the best athlete and person you can be in and contribute to the team to the best of your ability so I just gave the best of myself each and every day that I was there regardless of what my role was whether it was a starting keeper you know second string third string fourth string whatever it was I went out and trained my hardest when we were in camp uh, worked really hard away from camp to prepare myself to go into camps and and be the as productive and successful as I could be for my own um, personal sake, but also to help the team improve and get better. And and I think, you know, playing your role to the best of your ability, which I personally feel like I did, is kind of what helped my uh, national team career kind of be so prolonged. Gotcha. Let's talk about goalkeeping and soccer more specifically. So why do you think mental health is important for a goalkeeper specifically? And how has mental health and um taking advantage of the mental side of things helped you out yeah goalkeeping is one of the toughest positions on the field it's it's very mentally demanding and honestly there's games where I walk away from them more mentally drained than physically drained because it it demands so much of you the position you're constantly have to be active and engaged and um, communicating, organizing, and that's just kind of everybody in front of you. And then you have to personally be uh, responsible for your own actions and dealing with the pressures that are put on you externally, putting on the pressures, you know, the internal pressures that you're putting on yourself to do and perform well. And in that whole picture, you're trying not to make a mistake because ultimately if, if you make a mistake, it's the one position on the field where it's it can be punished and you know punished by a goal where everywhere else in the field a mistake can happen and someone else can cover for you and and it's not as big of a deal so i think mentally it's goalkeeping is it's huge it's such a huge part of position and i think it's something that not a lot of people really understand how mentally and physically demanding the position is um, unless you've actually kind of stepped into that role and and played it because it's tough. It's tough to have so many external pressures put on you. People expect you to kind of have a perfect game, which is pretty unrealistic. It's, it's very rare that you're ever going to have a perfect game with no mistakes back there. And, and I think that's something for young goalkeepers to kind of realize is mistakes are going to happen. And, it's more important of how you learn and teach yourself and train yourself to deal with those mistakes and to move on quickly because it could be a little mistake that doesn't lead to a goal or it could be a big mistake that ultimately leads to a goal. And it's how you mentally transition to that next phase of the game and move on from that mistake that is going to kind of determine how much, how successful you are because if you let things linger as a goalkeeper, it's just going to kind of continue to boil up and boil up. And typically it's when you kind of see the goalkeeper's game kind of go downhill pretty quickly because they don't have the ability to just let things go and, and move on quickly. And I think that's the biggest thing is is how quickly can you move on and just not 
let that stuff kind of fester in your head because the more you, you start thinking and overthinking things, the more difficult your position and your role becomes. I see. So what is your state of mind before a very important game? Like you said, there's a lot of pressure and it's mentally draining. So how do you prepare yourself for that? For me, I kind of have the mindset that I go into every training session and put in my best effort and do everything I can so that I know I've prepared throughout the week and going into that game, it's really nothing more than, than what I've been, you know, doing and training for that whole week and preparing myself. And, and if you train with the same mentality and intensity and mindset that you, you have or should have in a game, I think that transition to game, game is seamless. And, and for me, that's how I kind of personally deal with it. And, and it helps make the games almost have less pressure on them for me. I, I feel a lot more at ease going into games, knowing that I've done everything I could throughout the week to prepare. And that's kind of the moment to have fun and enjoy all of the hard work you've put in and go out and, and perform and, and enjoy it. Absolutely. How did you gain confidence in your game as a goalkeeper? And what thing motivate you to most become a goalkeeper? Why not any other position? Well, funny enough, I actually grew up playing mostly in the field. Um, I started when I was early on and just started playing soccer. I think it was at a point where kind of everybody had the opportunity to go in goal. And that was kind of my first taste of it. And, and I enjoyed it. But I also loved the opportunity to just be out in the field and run around and score goals. So I actually didn't become strictly a goalkeeper really until I went to college. Um, every opportunity I got, I, I loved being out in the field. But I think for me, it it took other people to kind of recognize my talents and push me in that direction and tell me that, you know, if I really focused on the goalkeeping position and worked hard at it, that it could ultimately take me somewhere really special one day so I think for me I, I probably would have been a field player in my mind if it if I didn't have those other people and coaches kind of steering me in the direction that that they saw me being most successful I see you've probably played for a lot of soccer teams so does it add more responsibility for you to protect the colors of the national team so the United States national team compared to a club team or a travel team it's definitely a very special opportunity and responsibility to get to wear the crest that represents your country. But for me, I think any crest you're wearing, it's it's very important to respect that crest and represent it well. So I take just as much pride in you know the crest for my club team as I do for the national team, and I always want to go out and and you know make a good name for myself and representing that that team and that club or the country and regardless of of which crest it is they all have the equal amount of importance to me it's just a matter of really what level you're representing at that is the difference in my mind got it so you've had a lot of penalty shootout matches in your career how are you setting yourself up for those and they're super important and all eyes are on you, so that pressure, how do you deal with that? And that was kind of a similar question, but maybe anything you want to add to that? Yeah, uh, I always I always dislike when when games come down to penalty kicks, for sure. I think it's, it's a very tough way to go out um, losing, especially in a match, especially a match that, um, you know, is, is ultimately for a high seating or a high placement or a medal match ultimately. But for me, I think it's important for goalkeepers to realize that all the pressure is really on, on the kickers. Um, they're, they're more expected to score than you are to save the shots. So if you kind of go in with that mindset, I take, I think it takes a little bit of pressure off of you as the goalkeeper. And if you kind of just make it a goal of yours to, save one shot or force them to miss one shot just with your presence i think you've you've then pretty much achieved your job and been successful in that penalty shootout but then as you as you start getting to the higher levels you have the opportunity to kind of scout players a little bit and know what their tendencies are so you can go into those with with a little bit more of um you know background information and you can make a little bit more of kind of an educated 
guess as to which direction or where they may go with it, which helps you a little bit. But I think, you know, the biggest thing is, is just knowing that win or lose, just go out there and put your best effort in because all the pressure is really on them and it shouldn't be on you and you shouldn't put it on yourself. And it's a tough situation, win or lose, to, to be in, especially as a goalkeeper. Yeah, I like that line of thought. Can you talk to us about Nicole Barnhart goalkeeping and that academy and what you do and what you plan to do with it in the future? Yeah, absolutely. So I started my own goalkeeping business um, a couple years back, kind of with the mindset that I love I love coaching. I love the opportunity to give back to the game because I feel like I've personally gained so much and benefited so much from it as, as a person and a player. And I wanted to be able to offer kind of all of my knowledge and experience and expertise to those coming up uh, wanting to be goalkeepers in the game. I, I know what it's like when I was growing up. I didn't have a lot of opportunities to have good quality training consistently. Um, so I know that, that that opportunity can be very beneficial for young goalkeepers to truly kind of understand the, understand the position, understand the game, and to really learn a lot about themselves and to learn the technique of the position. Because I think too many times you find young goalkeepers just having balls kicked at them, but never really given any feedback or information or knowledge to expand their game and improve the technique of it, which is ultimately what's going to help them continue to improve and get better and better. So I just wanted the opportunity to work with goalkeepers. Um, I work mostly in one-on-one -on -one sessions. Uh, I do small group stuff. I offer video analysis as well. And it's just an opportunity to help goalkeepers um, kind of reach their potential to, to train them and help them um, become the best version of the, themselves that they can be. And teach them um, life lessons and just help them grow as a person and an athlete. And, and I love it. I love every opportunity I get. And I've kind of just worked to start building that as I'm getting towards the end of my career. And then the hope is when I'm done my playing career to really kind of switch over into that, that full coaching mode and continue to grow and, and offer even more opportunities to work with and train uh, goalkeepers of all levels, really. Yeah, that's a super cool business idea. So how has your experience as a coach and a player shaped you? I think, you know, I've been shaped tremendously from my experiences, probably more so as a player, just because I've been doing that a little bit longer, but, but definitely as a coach as well, because I've had the opportunity to coach at almost every level there is so far. And, and I think each different level you work at, you learn a lot more about yourself and you, you get to see the game very differently than you did as a player. So I think um, the game has definitely shaped me as a coach. And, and I think the more I get into coaching as I kind of transition out of playing, the more I'll continue to learn about myself, um, I think as a person and view the game differently. But I think as a, as a player, it's for sure shaped me into the person I am. Um, it hasn't been an easy path to get to where I am. There's been a lot of, you know, trials and tribulations and bumps in the road, but, you know, you kind of, you're not happy about any of them in the moments when they happen. But if you, you kind of look back, you realize how much they make you grow as an individual, how much they make you grow as a player. And, and I think ultimately how much they make you learn about the game and, and really appreciate the game and I think, you know, the biggest thing I've probably taken away from all of my experiences as a player is you, you know, some of my best friends have, have been teammates that I've had over the years. I've had the opportunity to travel around the world and see different places and experience different cultures and uh, learn to really love, appreciate what I have, but be very respectful of of everything else um, that's out there and that's different and um, I think you just kind of really learn to respect what you do and have a true passion for it and um, a joy you know I've kind of always said that 
the day I stopped enjoying what I'm doing um, as a soccer player is probably my time to to hang up my boots. And I think all that has ultimately just allowed me to to love and enjoy the game a lot more. Absolutely. I like that answer. In the hyper competitive world that we are in today, how do you believe sports, soccer um, should be approached? So how does maybe a younger athlete not get lost or feel inferior? And how do they push through that? Yeah, it's it's tough in some of the the setups and environments that there are today. Um, I think, especially with soccer, because I know that so well. There's there's so many tough competitive environments nowadays that it is easy to get lost. And I think ultimately, you have to take the responsibility on yourself. And I know this is tough for some younger you know younger players out there, but to be responsible for your development and, um, you know, getting out of it what you want to get out of it and, and working towards what you want to achieve from it. And some of that might mean you have to go out and and work on your own away from team trainings and the team environment to improve on what you need to improve to be impactful and kind of really show and shine in in the team environment. Some of that might mean um, reaching out to, to other people to help you and, and guide you. And whether that's a coach you're reaching out to for a little bit of extra feedback or information or, you know, asking what you need to work on or just even helping you kind of set goals and uh, work towards achieving those goals. I think um, any of that that you can do, the more active and involved you are in your personal development and your personal growth, I think the less likely you are to kind of get lost in the system, really. That's great advice. Thanks for that. As a role model to tons of female athletes, what would you advise them if they face sexism or prejudice simply based on their gender? So how can they really find their confidence and act like nothing has really hit them hard? And sometimes it's hard to just um, push it off. Maybe it might stick in their head. So what would be your advice for that? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's definitely a tough, a tough situation to be in. Um, I think the world we live in today is very different than kind of what I grew up in. And there's a lot more opportunities out there for, for young girls and, and women in general. And at the same time, unfortunately, there is still a lot of uh, discrimination, discrimination, uh, sexism out there. And, and I think it's, it's okay to call people out and make them aware of, you know, what they're saying or doing isn't okay. But I think, you know, aside from that, you also just have to find the strength in yourself to not worry so much about what people are saying or telling you and just kind of put your head down and push on and not let them show that that it is affecting you and just be strong-minded and strong-willed and 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 strong in your heart to to have the courage to continue to work to do what you want to do and ultimately go out and just prove everybody wrong that that doesn't believe in you or or is the one kind of um pushing against what what you're doing or trying to do i see what keeps you motivated in the sports world throughout your journey as a player and does motivation play a vital role in the performance of a professional athlete? Yeah, I think motivation is huge. If if you kind of if you don't have the right mindset or your heart isn't truly in what whatever it is that you're doing, whatever your your role or profession is, then you're ultimately never going to perform it to your best ability. And I think for me, my motivation is just how much pure joy I get out of playing the game and and how much I love it and how much I respect it and and how much I have gained and learned from it. And I think that is kind of what gets me in the right mindset and um, continues to push me to want to be better each and every day that I step out on that field and to go out there and, you know, soccer is a team sport to, to want to perform my best to help my team be better each and every day as well, I think is is a huge motivating factor. And 
and another one for me is you know just just kind of representing and respecting my family and and all the support and kind of love they've given me over the years that has allowed me to get to where I am and and be the person and the athlete that I am today and I think if if you kind of don't have any or all of that if your mindset's not right if your heart's not really in it you you're gonna you're kind of kind of sense that in the person and you're not going to see that joy in them and you're not going to see them giving their best effort every day for themselves or their team and and um i think you know ultimately it it will impact the performance and um it'll it'll become tougher and tougher to go out there and and do what you need to do if if your mindset's not there and you're not doing it for the right reasons cool Pretty broad question, but I'd like to see your explanation behind it. What is a quote you live by and want to tell to the world and why? So one that I've actually always loved for a long time it is to the world, you may be one person, but to one person, you may be the world. And um, this was a quote I actually loved before I was even a professional athlete, but I think it's kind of very fitting for what I do because as a professional athlete, you are a role model to so many people and there's so many um, people out there that you impact in in ways that I will never ever know um you know so to the world I'm kind of just seen as this or known as this professional soccer player but you know something I say in action I do something that may seem very little to me could just be the highlight of someone else's day and, um, you know, truly change their life and, and have an impact in a way that I will never know. And, and for me, that's kind of a motto of how I live my life is I want to be that role model for, for everyone. You know, I know that you're kind of in a spotlight as a professional athlete and always being watched. And I want to make sure that every action I do and everything I perform, um, is in the way I want to be uh, seen and is in a respectful way so that everything I do could ultimately impact someone out there. And, and I have no way of knowing it, but just to, to have that impact on someone else, I think is very special and very meaningful to me. Yeah, that's a super inspiring quote. And I like that one. Can you talk to us about your experience with teammates and your interaction with them over your career and how essential teammates are to a positive performance? Yeah, I mean, the best teams I've been on have been the teams with the best culture, the teams where, you know, on and off the field, you're, you're like a family. You you get along, you respect each other, you trust each other, you, you understand each other, you know each other, you go through everything together. And ultimately, when you get out on that field, you're out there and you want to fight for each and every one of your teammates um, just because of that bond and cohesiveness that you have. And, and I've, I found the best teams I've been on maybe haven't necessarily been the most talented teams on paper, but more so the team that has that identity and that, that culture and just kind of like that family feeling to it. And you go out and, work hard every day in training kind of with that blue collar mentality and then when you get out in games you're out there fighting for each and every one of your teammates whether they're on the field next year or on the bench just knowing that every day you all come together collectively to give your best and and then you go out there and and put your best foot forward to make each of your teammates look better and ultimately try to get that result together as a team you do it together win or lose so as a goalkeeper, do you feel like you kind of were not as socially connected with your other teammates because goalkeeping is kind of like one position off the field kind of away from your other teammates? Yeah, it is sometimes challenging because you do spend so much time away from the rest of the team. You know, you're kind of isolated in your own little corner for training. Um, you know, there's a lot of times where we go out and start training a lot earlier than the rest of the team, or there's days where you have to stay after training and do a little bit more. So you do sometimes miss that that kind of interaction and bonding time that happens before trainings. And then during training, you're not in you know the collective team setting until maybe closer to the end of, of a session. 
so it is it is definitely a little bit isolating at times but i think it's kind of a known of the position and i think it's it's what you do with your time when you are around the team that that has the most impact and whether that's in a trading session of just how you kind of lead the team and communicate with players but also you know off the field as well is you just have to work to create those bonds um and those um relationships really so that when you are on the field and you do have to play in games together that you kind of understand each other and respect each other and i think it's it's very it's very tough as a goalkeeper cuz you have so many demands on you already and then you kind of have this aspect where you are isolated but then expected to come in and and really lead the team and it's it's tough and i think it's definitely a, a mental aspect of the game you know touching back on what we spoke about earlier of of can you overcome that as a goalkeeper and and have that mindset and mentality that this is your role this is kind of how it works but you still have to be a leader and bring everybody together um, in the end, really. I love that. Hypothetical situation. So if you're a goalkeeper and you let up a goal and everyone on the team blames you for the goal, what would you do in that situation? And what would you tell a goalkeeper in that situation to do if everyone's um, kind of hating on you? And you also know that's your fault, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's very tough. Um, you know, I was kind of always told as a, a younger goalkeeper that there's all those other players in front of you that the ball had to get through before it got to you. But in, in the bigger picture, you know, mistakes are going to happen. And I think it's more so, you know, if it's, if it's a, a blatant mistake on you, just kind of, you know, give your teammates a wave, say, hey, that's on me, accept it, but then move on, mentally move on. And I think how you react from that situation is going to determine how the rest of your teammates kind of react and move on. If if you kind of hang your head and have poor body language after you've you've made a mistake or given up a goal that was, was definitely your fault, your teammates will see that and read that and probably linger on it more. But if, if you have kind of a different reaction where your head's up, you're still engaged in the game, you're still communicating with your team, you're still leading your team, I think that they will tend to switch off and forget about it a lot uh, a lot faster and move on and continue to play the game. So I think a lot of it comes down to, to how you react and how you respond, and they're going to feed off of you and, and your confidence and your energy and, and your reaction in the end. That's great advice. Are there any pieces of advice that you'd like to share or any remarks or anything that you want the audience to take away from this podcast? Um, I think the biggest thing is, you know, goalkeeping is is a very tough position. I've always kind of said that I think every soccer player should have to go through one true full goalkeeping session in their career to really understand the position understand the mental and and physical demands of it because i think there's so many people out there that that try to coach it or try to give advice that don't truly understand um, the ins and outs of the position the mental side the physical side um, just how isolating it is and how how challenging it is in all aspects so i think the more you can kind of put yourself in that position as a player or a coach or even just a fan or a parent um i think the the more you can learn about the position the the better off kind of everybody will be in in the the bigger picture because i think it is a little bit of a a lost art sometimes that, that gets forgotten or not really respected or or truly understood the way it should be and i think sometimes people don't put the effort in to want to learn or figure it out and i think especially if you have a young goalkeeper out there as a parent or a coach i think the more you can learn that it'll benefit them because you can actually help them grow and get through the tough situations the more you understand it nicole thanks so much for hopping on the podcast 
I learned a lot and it was a pleasure to talk to you, someone so accomplished in soccer and academically. So thanks again. Yeah, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be on. Thanks for listening to the My Design Sports Podcast. Before you leave, please show some love for the podcast by subscribing, liking, and commenting. Stay tuned for next month's podcast with a new guest speaker.